I think it's very important for you to, to and I will try to be as, as concise and clear as possible. This is not the easiest thing to explain because there's an awful lot going on here. But I want you to understand the impetus for this recommendation was as follows. First, last year the, the recommendations from the council were that we do the very same thing that we are doing this year, and that is address a deviation from mandatory minimums in the area of drug trafficking offenses. And I'll address those where they are in the bill. Uh, they start on page 6, line 193, and they go through page 9 of line 302. And that's the drug trafficking portion. In addition, um, and, and that's handled a, a, a certain way. In addition, we were asked to address mandatory minimums relative to serious violent offenders, sex offenders, and repeat offenders. And those are in the bill as well, but they are deal dealt with a little bit differently. Um, interestingly, if you will start on line 193, and Mr. Chairman, you are correct, uh, the precursor to any appropriate or allowed deviation under this bill, that is for a judge to deviate from a heretofore mandatory minimum sentence, first, uh, the judge would have to conclude five particular things. First, that the, defender was, the defendant was not a leader of the criminal conduct. The defendant did not use a weapon during the crime. The criminal conduct did not result in death or serious bodily injury to a person other than a person who is a party to a crime. Uh, the defendant had no prior felony conviction, and lastly, that the interest of justice will not be served by the imposition of the prescribed mandatory minimum. Uh, indeed, Mr. Chairman, you are correct that that pretty well emulates federal statutes relative to the ability of federal judges to depart from mandatory minimum sentencing. I will read to you from uh, 18 U.S.C. section 3553, and the judges in federal court have to find that the criminal defendant has only one criminal history point. Any of you, like me, have ever dealt with federal criminal appointed cases, you know that that generally means the defendant is not a prior convicted felon. Second, the defendant did not use violence. Next, that the defendant uh, uh, or that the offense didn't lead to death or serious bodily injury. Next, that the defendant was not an organizer, leader, manager, or supervisor. And, and in essence, that the ends of justice would be met. So we're not really refiling new ground, Mr. Chairman, in the area of mandatory minimum deviations for drug trafficking. Well, why might, we, we, why might the council even be considering it? And I think there are a number of answers to that. The first is probably that uh, there is a general consensus among the council and among the Department of Corrections, and as proven up by the data, uh, that our drug trafficking statutes are very rarely capturing the kingpins, uh, who we were intending to, to capture. Uh, what we are capturing probably as a trial judge, I can tell you in my personal experience in six counties as a felony trial judge, um, you're generally catching the mules. Um, the folks that, that, uh, that know this stuff, and they are the kingpins, know what the mandatory minimums are for certain levels of quantity of drug uh, for certain offenses, uh, are not going to be caught with 28 grams of cocaine. They're generally going to enlist the services of a young uh, offender, uh, a young individual, and use those individuals to carry the drugs. And those, that's who we're generally catching. I did ask at the chairman's request that the Department of Corrections look at their 2012 prison admissions for trafficking. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you have referred to those numbers. There were 2,672 prison admissions for trafficking in 2012. Um, 129 of those had no prior felony convictions. Now, if you added, in addition, as you are correct, Mr. Chairman, all of the other criteria, uh, the number of people that were probably affecting by um, this bill, if you were to pass it relative to drug trafficking, mandatory minimums, would be relatively small. Yet, it is important uh, for each individual case to be decided on its own merit and to give judges discretion in deciding what is an appropriate sentence. This bill does not abolish mandatory minimums for drug trafficking. Indeed, all it does is sets a lower minimum threshold that the judge could consider under appropriate circumstances when all five of these criteria had been met. And even then, the judge is not required to deviate from this, the current mandatory minimums, only that the judge may. Um, I think that's very important for you to know, and if you look on line 193, it says the judge may depart if the judge concludes and then those five criteria. So that was the impetus. And they serve every day of that sentence. They are not eligible, even if given under this statute a mandatory minimum sentence that is lower than the current mandatory minimum sentence, they will still not be eligible for, for parole earn time release or otherwise. They're going to serve every day to the door, of course, only giving them credit as the Constitution and law requires for time served in the county jail prior to their conviction. Um, but now, having said that, let me walk you through, if you, if, if you will allow me, starting on line 203 of page 6, where we get into the sentencing departure ranges. 
please understand that we have mandatory minimum sentencing in the drug trafficking world that runs the gamut from a five-year mandatory minimum sentence to a 25-year mandatory minimum sentence depending on the drug and depending on the quantity of the drug. For example, um, we have a five-year mandatory minimum sentence for marijuana between 10 pounds and 2,000 pounds. That's current law. We have a seven-year mandatory minimum sentence for marijuana between 2,000 and 10,000 pounds. We go to a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence for, for cocaine and methamphetamine or amphetamines uh, between 28 grams and 200 grams or manufacturing over 200 grams. We go to a 15-year mandatory minimum sentence for cocaine between 200 and 400 grams, methamphetamine or amphetamines between 200 and 400 grams, and between 200 and 400 grams of meth or amphetamine manufacturing. And then 25-year mandatory minimum in current law for morphine or opium over 28 grams, or cocaine over 400 grams, or methamphetamine over 400 grams, or the manufacturing of methamphetamine or amphetamines over 400 grams. So that's why this looks so cumbersome. Uh, I've gotten it broken down in the bill and will, can, can walk you through that. But as you are correct, Mr. Chairman, all that is being proposed relative to mandatory minimums in the, in the area of drug trafficking and in each of these drugs that are in current law is you take the bottom end, whether that's five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, or 25 years, and allow the judge to depart 50% downward where those five criteria have been met. And uh, I can walk through that. Um, all of that starts on line 205 of page 6 and runs through line 240 of page 7. Each Judge, I mean, we, we, I mean, as long as members of the committee understand that it remains consistent throughout the bill it is. that the downward departure where the defendant has met all the criteria and where the judge may exercise this discretion, where she or she may or may not, depending on the facts of that particular case and their judgment, uh, that range does not deviate from 50% of the man minimum mandatory to the full minimum. In mandatory. essence, it lowers the, it, 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 it maintains a mandatory minimum in drug trafficking offenses across the board at 50% of what they currently are now, but only for a select group of people. The contrast comes when we're taking a look at serious violent felonies, yes, um, which are serious violent felonies. And the, the, the deviation that we've made there, uh, that the governor has proposed, is uh, given the fact that it is a serious, that we are talking about a serious uh, violent felony, that that downward departure in the sentencing would only occur if there is agreement between uh, the prosecutor and the defense lawyer, and of course uh, the defense, and then of course accepted uh, by the judge. That is a higher, obviously, a higher threshold. Why? Because it is a serious violent felony. Is that yes. correct? It, it is. Um, so, so as I stated earlier, we're dealing with mandatory minimums two different ways, lowering by 50 percent. Only in certain cases, the mandatory minimum in trafficking, and that, as I've told you, uh, is all of lines of uh, section, last part of section four, all the way through um, 251 of line eight. Section five, because it deals solely with ecstasy, ecstasy is dealt with differently than in 16, 13, 30. Uh, ecstasy had to be pulled out separately, but Section 5 only deals with ecstasy as is dealt with in Section 16-13, uh, 31.1 of the Code, and it, it tracks the exact same language in the preceding uh, section relative to all of the offenses for trafficking within 16-13-30. Then, and, and I think it's also fair to note, although not probably as significant, that in addition to allowing a judge to deviate downward 50% on all the drug trafficking offenses, the monetary fine could be lowered by 50% as well. 